What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast. I'm your host, Chad Medved. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, First thing is first, please, if you have not yet, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You know, it takes, you know, no time at all. Uh, If you enjoy the podcast, this shit is free. You know, just scroll up on your podcast app, hit the subscribe button, and uh, rate and review the podcast. Uh, Keep the positive reviews up there, please. You know, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, keep on moving along. But uh, if you do want to say something nice, by all means, and it is greatly appreciated. Uh, You know, I'm just thankful for uh, everything that this podcast has uh, kind of been kind of been bringing to me you know it's been growing it's been doing well i'm thankful for it and uh, i'm thankful for turner dairy farms the creators of turner's premium iced tea uh so turner turner dairy farms is a sponsor of the podcast and uh if you do not know who they are they are a dairy farm that is located in penn hills they've been around for 90 years and uh you know i work with them and uh, i could not be more thankful to say that i work with them um, and for the people that don't know, they have a brand new limited edition flavored milk out. You got some chocolate banana milk that is on the shelves as we speak. And, uh, it's been on the shelves for a couple weeks now. So, I mean, I don't know how much longer it's going to be there. You know, all their milk sells out pretty damn fast. And, uh, I have, I've definitely had my helping, you know, now that I knew where, I could find it on the regular, you know, pop right up there, a little chocolate banana, and, you know, that goes right down. Um, If you pour, you know, I'm someone that if you pour any glass, any size glass of chocolate milk, you know, I'm not just sipping it. You know, the only time I'm sipping milk is if I'm at like a restaurant and there's no free refills. You know, if I got a gallon of milk at home, a gallon of chocolate milk, and I fill up a cup, I'm ripping that first one right down. And then, you know, maybe I'll fill it up another halfway and then I'll kind of baby that one. But man, Turner Dairy Milk is, uh, you know, that's the elite chocolate milk. And uh, if you want to get a little bit wild, chocolate bananas on the shelves right now. So pop on over to your local bodega and uh, grab yourself a ice cold thug jug of some uh, chocolate banana milk. Uh, like I said, it's not going to be around for long. So get out there and get it while you can. Um, a couple other things that I wanted to bring up this week in this intro. Oh, actually, so I just got an email about Turner's uh, merch, you know, Turner's merch just emailed me. And, uh, a while ago, whenever I was talking about, they had that brand new merch that they just put out. They did a limited edition shirt called the Turner's table. And, uh, it was a super cool shirt, super cool design. And, uh, it was a pre-order. So if you did order that Turner's table shirt, uh, I got my email today, which means that it is shipped out. So you'll be getting yours in a couple of days. And uh, I'm pumped about it. You know, it fall, it's fall time right now. I'm excited. Uh, it's just like, you know, the temperature is just slowly declining. And I hope it stays that way. I hope we just don't have no random 90 degree days. But, you know, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. But, uh, man, great people over at Turner's. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited for that opportunity all the time. Uh, a couple other things that I wanted to talk about in this week's intro. Uh, I did a few things and uh, I wanted to go over them, you know, skip forward if you don't want to hear about it. But uh, I did. Uh, so I did this thing called the uh, Bike PGH Pedal Pittsburgh event. And, uh, you know, what this is, is like, It's an organization that is responsible for the upkeep of all the bike lanes around here and all the biking events around here. And uh, this is my first year doing it. You know, if you've listened to the podcast, I've talked about it and I've told you that, you know, I've been on my bike as much as I could be. You know, I'm just riding all the time and I love it. So Bike Pittsburgh has this, you know, it's like a curated route. Okay. So every year you donate some money to a good cause and, uh, they give you, you know, the opportunity to participate in this race. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a race if you choose it to be, but, uh, you know, this year with the COVID shit, it's a little bit different. So instead of everyone starting at one time and doing this ride together as one, uh, they opened it up to four days from Thursday to Sunday, and you were able to, you know, go at your own, you know, your own pace by yourself, you know, keep your social distancing. And uh, they had four tiers. They had like a five mile, a 10 mile, a 25 and a 40. Okay. So I've been riding my bike a lot. 
I've been, you know, I've been ripping some miles, a good bit of miles. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this 40. I'm definitely doing this 40. And uh, I'm going to get these 40 miles. I'll rip it real quick, and then I'll be done. Let me tell you that it was absolutely the most, I mean, absolutely the most miserable I've ever been in my entire life. Uh, I was riding my bike. You know, the downhill parts were awesome, but the hills in Pittsburgh are absolutely just obnoxious. Uh, there's one called Homer Street that's down in Spring Garden that I thought I was going to have a heart attack going up. And, uh, you know, I tried my best and I made it. I did all 40 miles. I had to walk my ass up some hills, but I did it. And uh, it it really, really killed me. You know, it definitely killed me. Next day, I was just tapped out. You know, I was just watching shit on TV. Uh, I watched, uh, you know, I've been getting into all, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Never watched it before. Uh, I saw an episode or two, but... I started from the beginning and I'm like four, I'm almost four seasons in and it, it really is a great show. I'm excited to keep getting into that. So I binge watch a bunch of that. And then I watch this brand new documentary called I cannot, or you cannot kill David Arquette. And uh, if you don't know who David Arquette is, Dewey from scream, you know, the idiot cop kind of, you know, he was in ready to rumble. He, I mean, he hasn't been in like a crazy amount of movies. He was in C spot run. Uh, <laughs> but he is, you know, whenever he was doing ready to rumble, it's a wrestling movie back in two thousands. I didn't know this, but he like got involved in professional wrestling and he ended up being like awarded the heavyweight title belt in wrestling, which like kind of like changed the feeling of the wrestling industry. Uh, and uh, this whole documentary is kind of about that period of time and how people like literally hated him. Like he said, people were spitting in his face and like, you know, telling him to fuck off doing all this crazy shit. And uh, this is just about his life and what he's trying to do to try to like earn that respect through this like professional wrestling, you know, organization. And uh, it was just so, like, I thought it was great um, for being what it is. Like it's a, it's a documentary about David Arquette becoming a wrestler. And uh, you know, I didn't go into it thinking it was going to be a damn masterpiece. It ain't going to be no blackfish, but you know, it was, uh, it was great. I thought it was really good. Amazon, you could get it for like five bucks, you know, it's worth watching, but uh, you know, I did that for my uh for my rest day and then i popped on over to uh the 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 place of the guests that i spoke to this week so my guest this week is a guy named bo trasada bo is from you know the small area of chippewa up in uh beaver but he is now uh you know he lives in the city and he is just an entrepreneur and bo recently opened up uh, IV hydration therapy spot called Quick Drip IV. All right, Quick Drip IV again is a hydration therapy spot. So, like, if you see anything online where it's like, you know, um, like I explained to him in here, I would see some celebrities that I would know. Uh, they would like bring these people in, and you would just, you know, kind of chill there, and you would get an IV bag, and that's like, you know, it could be for anything from like, you know, rehabbing a hangover to like you know, jet lag to, you know, just, uh, you know, to make yourself feel better, but it's, you you know, you're getting an IV bag, you're getting saline, but, uh, mainly you're getting a nice concoction of minerals and, uh, you know, things that, you know, vitamins, minerals, like everything you need to make your body function better. You know what I mean? Like we're out there all the time. You know, I just, I literally just you know, I stuffed my face with terrible food. I don't take the best care of myself, but whenever I do have the option to take care of myself, I like to, you know, I'm getting a little bit older, I'm getting a little bit more uh, conscious of my mortality. So while I'm not, you know, cramming down a thousand calorie burger, you know, I like to, I like to take off the edge with a little bit of health kick. So, uh, I ended up finding out about quick drip IV through, uh, Matt Christie at streets on Carson. And, uh, I've always, like I said, I've seen people do this and, uh, I've seen like celebrities like Theo Vaughn and Burt Kreischer and all them. They just bring someone out. Everyone sits in a chair and people put an IV bag in their arm. And it's just like, you know, it's just a, uh, it's a treatment, you know, it's like going to the chiropractor or like going to, you know, get some acupuncture or something like that. And, uh, I hit up Bo and I was like, yo, man, I was like, I would love to come in and try out, you know, one of the bags that you got in there. So I wanted to wait until I felt 
you know, a time where my body was in a negative and I figure why not till after, why not wait until after you do this crazy bike ride? Like I sweat more than I've ever sweat in my life. So I knew that I would be dehydrated. And, uh, I was like, you know, this is a better time than there's no better time than now. So I wake up Sunday, I have a little bit of a hangover, or not a hangover, but I have a little bit of a headache from, you know, I assume from not, you know, not having enough liquids inside of me. And, uh, you know, my first, you know, your first instinct, whenever you get a headache, you're like, Oh, I'm going to go take a Tylenol. I was like, no, I'm going to wait because, you know, I'm going to go get this IV hydration therapy treatment down there at uh, quick drip IV. And I wanted to just see if I could feel a difference. And, uh, I had a little headache whenever I went down there, but after I got this, this, uh, my session down there, I, I literally did not have a headache. And, uh, Bo is, someone who, you know, he's 37 years old. He has worked in, you know, you know, a regular corporate field, but, uh, always had that entrepreneurial type bone in his body. And, uh, he just, you know, we talk about how he kind of got involved in this, you know, it's kind of like a unique lane to be in, you know, you're just, you're giving people IVs, you know, a lot of people think about that, you know, and they associate that with like the doctor's office, but, you know, this is a place that is, you know, kind of cutting out that uncomfortable feeling of a doctor's office, you know, the crazy neon lights, you know, you're going there, no one wants to go to a doctor's office, you go down to uh, quick drip IV at 1205 East Carson Street, and Bo got it laced out in there, you got some some super comfortable chairs, it's a really, really nice environment, you can watch TV if you want, you can listen to music if you want, and you just go down there and you could pick through six of the treatments that they have right now, and, uh, and we talk about all this during this episode and it was a great episode it really was I didn't know too much about any of this but uh, I was super curious so I tried it out I was happy with the results of you know the treatment that I've gotten and uh, I wanted to talk to him and figure out more about it and that's what this whole episode is about and we go over everything from you know I mean we talk about literally everything we talk about his family and how like uh you know, like how they're taking to a son being an entrepreneur. We talk about, you know, how he got involved in this. We talk about like the the hoops and the leaps and bounds you have to go through to try to, you know, get this approved and being able to run, you know, a medical type facility like this. And uh, it was just a super interesting conversation. I really had a great time talking with him. And uh, so Bo has been cool enough to want to do a giveaway with me. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a giveaway for one free treatment down at Quick Trip IV in uh, on East Carson Street in the South Side. Uh, same deal that I always do. It'll be on Instagram. I will post the uh, cover art today uh, for people that have not uh, for people that are not people that are listening to it first thing in the morning. I usually post the cover art around 10 a.m. and uh, then I will post this giveaway post around noon. So you know, keep checking back. Follow me on Instagram at I'll call you right back and uh, follow Bo on Instagram at Quick Drip IV PGH. And, uh, you know, you'll keep up to date on what's going on and you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see what we're doing. So without further ado, episode 132 of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with Bo Trasada from Quick Trip IV. So I met you through uh, through a mutual friend, Matt at Streets on Carson. You mm-hmm. own the Quick Trip IV in Car- on Carson Street, Caddy Corner, the boy. Caddy Corner on the boy. What's uh What's the address down there? It's twelve oh five East Carson Street. Okay, so twelve oh five East Carson Street. For people that are listening that don't understand what uh, an IV treatment center is, like explain what that is. So what we do, it's IV hydration therapy. The process is we're delivering fluids basically straight to your bloodstream. Yes. Um, You're bypassing your stomach, so you're getting the full value of everything. The bag of fluids, people, they associate that with electrolytes, basically. But 
in my our bags, we also provide you a variety of vitamins, minerals, something that you know you would your body most importantly needs. Yeah. And you know, we try to get everything we can through our foods and diet and but, some, but we always miss it out sometimes. Yeah, you know, but you're not really getting the full value. So when you're doing it through an IV, you're taking it in 100%. Yeah. Your body's not working hard. It's getting delivered to you. And it's most important, staying in the system. Yeah, if everything, you're you're relaxing to the maximum while getting this treatment. And it's like uh, you're not exerting yourself. You're not doing nothing. Mm-mm. But uh, you have a very uh, nice environment down there. Like I, like I came into your spot and uh, I... You know, I just like how you have everything set up. Like, it felt very, very, like, you know, safe, clean. You know, I feel that people associate uh, anything that has to do with, like, needles or, like, health or, like, a medical. Like, everyone wants to – no one wants to go to the doctor. People hate going to the dentist. But, like, you having this, like, spot kind of cuts – you know, that like, that like sterile, weird, stuffy it, part that's out. That's what I wanted to do, you know, not walking in a place and seeing four white walls and a guy coming up to, you know, some of the anticipated news. I yeah, mean, yeah, here, yeah. Here, you know, it's, everything is done up front. You're getting a personal experience. And I want you to sit down, relax. You're saying, I've got a great staff on hand. We'll yeah. talk, you know, and I'll even be there, you know, wanting to you know, BS with you and, get you familiar with the process and hey we'll cut on some netflix and just chill i know like <laughs> i uh after i i've i've saw yin's uh saw yin's, i think whenever you started putting it up there matt matt told me about it and then uh every time i drove by i always see you there you're always sitting it there at the front desk and uh you know, I, I came in on Sunday. I had a big bike race uh thing on Saturday. So I was like you know, me and you were talking about doing this interview and like, I, I wanted to try your, you know, I wanted to try the product before like I started Glad talking you to you about it. You know, I wanted to like try it and like kind of get a result from it. And, uh, like I was talking to you whenever we were down there, like I don't drink too much. You know what I mean? I, uh, I don't, I don't really drink at all. So like me coming in hungover would be a great time for me to try what you like a service that you provide, mm-hmm. you know, IV regeneration therapy. Like you're trying to like, you know, uh, you know, I mean, everyone's dehydrated, you said. Yeah, like the majority of people are. Just our lifestyles now yeah. and the foods we eat. I mean, the sticks are crazy. But, I mean, and then I know the thing about it is, oh, you got to be hungover, drunk to come in and do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That was my misconception. Yeah. So I was like, I need to wait for something where I'm like, kind of like beat down a little bit. So I was like, I did this bike race. I was like, this is going to be perfect. You know, I had a little bit of a headache whenever I woke up the, the, the day of, Mm -hmm. you know, the day after my bike race, probably because I was dehydrated as shit. I've never sweat more in my life. So I was like, I'm not going to take a Tylenol. You you told me you did like 40 miles, 40 miles, 30, uh, uh, 3000 elevation change. And like, I'm a big dude, you know, like I'm a big dude for me. Like I felt. I've never in my life felt is is like miserable and like just exhausted and like you know just like spent completely. Mm-hmm. So I was I woke up the next day, had a little bit of a headache and I knew it was from not having enough water. So I was like I'm not going to drink a, an a, an Advil like I, I, or I'm not going to take a Tylenol or whatever. I want to go down there and just see what it was and I swear to god my headache was gone. It yeah, was. That's and that's the purpose of it cuz everything if you were to take that Advil a Tylenol, whatever it is, yeah. in that pill, it's a ton of fillers. You're getting a bit of amount, and your body's really just you're actually putting through more strain to yeah. get that shit to work for you to like break it down to break it down, and you're still not solving the main problem, which is your hydration levels. Yeah, and, you know something like that is. I'm, I'm glad you came in for that reason too. Yeah, is just to see because I feel you know our products. I keep it very simple. I mean, you see, there's a ton of things out there you can take. Yeah, but really, us as humans, we need just the basics at the end of the day and you know my our menu is pretty simplified we're able to walk you right through it and most importantly we don't shove anything down your throat that you don't need yeah 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 that's a great thing because we have a pa on staff so we're able to you know talk really get to know our customers too to say hey man i know you came in for this but the end of the day you don't even need it just take this and you'll be great for the next couple of days yeah like i was talking to her about uh you know she was asking me you know, did I look at your menu on the website at all? And uh, I did look at it, but, you know, I didn't, you know, I kind of wanted to, 
you know, just hear your opinions and like what your recommendations are. You know, and she, she just like yeah. boiled it right down. The menu kind of forces you to do that. Too. Yeah. That's kind of, there's a rhyme reads because a lot of calls I get, it's like, so what's actually in this bag? What's in here? What's in here? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm more than happy to tell you, but I need to know how are you feeling today? Yeah. You know, um, you speak with my PA yet. You fill out a form. Okay, man, here's what's in this. And for these reasons, you need this. Yeah. Or here's what this is. I know you picked it this way, but man, that's not for you today. Yeah. And, you know, we're never in there to overload you. We take that very seriously. Um, you know, we do full HIPAA charts, all the good stuff to make sure, most importantly, y'all are safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, now you have, you said you had six different uh, treatments down there? Yeah, we have six different treatments on the menu. Now, we are looking to grow that, you know, from time to time. But, yes, yeah, so... Shames you're talking about, we break it down to two formats. The quick drips, which is your hydration, those for the hangover side of things, and our health drips. Yes. Which are things addressing, like you took, the fitness bag. Yeah, and I saw you had an immunity bag. Immunity bag, and your full dose of your vitamins, zinc, and additives to that, and also a jet lag bag. It's really for people that need to start their Mondays, you know, with a good pick-me-up. Yeah. That carries you on through the week. And the great thing about our bags when you take the minerals this way during your system for about two to three weeks yeah yeah so you really get the full ass dose and then people have never i've had people come up to me like yeah i never realized that and felt this good for this long and how did it kick in you know you break down the signs to them and they're you know, there's been good results with it yeah and then uh i i was telling you whenever i uh like how i kind of like came across you know IV hydration therapy was like, you know, just through random, you know, celebrities that I follow, yeah. you know, you see people go into like a, like I saw a comedian specifically like Burt Kreischer, he had a tour and he was just bringing someone out for all him and his openers uh, and like a couple other comedians whenever they're like flying a bunch during a week. And uh, it's always been like something where I was like, oh, that's like, that's some Hollywood type shit. Like, I'm never going to be able to like, <laughs> that's not in my grasp. Mm -hmm. Like, that's probably crazy money. But, uh, you know. Once I figured out that you were right on East Carson and once I like checked Ian's out and like saw the prices, it's like super, you know, it's super reasonable. Like what's the price of someone's health? And uh, I don't know about other people that are listening that think, uh, I don't know how Ian's think, but like me, like I'm to the point in my life where like I'm kind of being very conscious of like, you know, I want to be more healthy. I want to like be more, you know, conscious of you know my mortality and it's shit like that. These times, man. I yeah, mean, yeah, you yeah. Realize it just this week alone, like life it's is crazy, precious, and you got to take advantage of it while you can. And having something I feel like this in Pittsburgh that we don't only do it at. The, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. everybody sees like, okay, the celebrity they're in this hotel room on a tour bus getting one of these. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're more than happy to come out to use well. All at the same, all at the same price. I mean, yeah. we don't. We want to make sure there's people that can't. You know, there may be a situation where they can't get to the shop. Absolutely. Or they're in. You know, whatever it may be, we want to make it available to everyone. That's yeah, 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 you know absolutely. I mean? But you have a you have this good spot that was like you know you have a lot of foot traffic down there. That's like a big popping part of town. You know, there is people that are gonna like Southside. People are getting tore up down there. You know, <laughs> like yeah, that's <laughs> that was kind. of It's crazy how that spot even came into play. Yeah, like it was during all this, and I have Matt to thank for because I was going to eat his spot. You know, he had them Sunday squad dinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Which one did you get? You have everyone. I know. I think the day we got I got everyone. that one, it was, it was this. I never heard of this chicken dish. Oh yeah. He said it was like the date maker. Uh, <laughs> what he oh called. yeah. <laughs> he said that he made it for dates. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's the date maker one. Oh man, I can't remember what it was called, but that was it's got it was some so French good. twang on it. Yeah, or yeah, something yeah. Like that, but man, oh, he's it, a wizard in that yeah, kitchen. Yeah. Boy, it's a beast. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> but yeah, I went in there, got that, and I'm like waiting for because they had the line coming out. So I'm like, you know, whatever. I don't even see that spot. Yeah. I'm like for rent. I wasn't really because my whole idea with this was first off to be strictly mobile. Yeah, that's what you said, mobile, like yeah. a mobile treatment facility where you could just kind of go to people. Go to people, you know. I had a good, great team of nurses. They were out sprouting the city. Like, yeah, I could literally just be like, okay, you need to be here, you need to be here. Let me get you the stuff. We'll do this. Yeah. Then I, I peeped that spot and I was like, you know what? Maybe this is what people really need to get that guard down. Yeah. And there was some brick and mortar had a talk with the dude, uh, you know, during these times. And he was, he believed in the vision, signed up with me. Yeah. So he was like, you know, people call about this. I didn't want to be in one of these. I didn't want to be one of this. Yeah. But your idea, man, I like that. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. I told him, like, I didn't really have that much to 
come out the gate with it. But he's like, yo, but I'll work with you to make this happen. And that's kind of I think that it, play. I think that it's interesting because, like, you know, this is, like, something that I feel, you know, I feel like that it's almost, like, kind of overwhelming for people if they don't, you know, know about it, if they haven't, like, really, like, seen a lot of people doing this type of thing. And, like, uh, you know, kind of like how I was in the beginning. Like, I thought it was, like, you know, some Hollywood shit. Like, I'm never yeah. going to be able to do this. And, uh, you know like having it down there and having it like kind of more attainable for everyone is kind of like, you know, you're putting it in front of them to where, you know, it's almost like blatant for them to try it out and be able to do that. And I think that that's wise to do. That's a lot of it is, you know, being in that location, having the site and all, most of my days I'm taking calls. It's yeah. like people are walking in. I'm just giving classes on. Yeah. What's going on? Therapy, like what's going on and how can I do this? And I think it brings people down to say like, Hey, I'm just a regular dude. Yeah. You know, I try to be there, you know, every day, you know, having these conversations also with the PA on site. I mean, everybody loves talking to her as well. Yeah. It's great personal staff. It's like, yeah, we'll just go, we'll take that time we can. Yeah. I mean, I have people come in there, they're jittery and whatnot. And we're like, we're going to go set your pace. I know it's called quick drip, but yeah. really it's, it's your drip. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I definitely, uh, I thought it was definitely a good, you know, it was a good setup. I was curious about everything because, like, I didn't know too much about it. Um, but, you know, like, like for you to have all these things, like, in these bags, all these different minerals and everything like that, like, where do you source all this stuff coming? Like, where is it coming from? So, man, it was a journey to <laughs> get that started. So I work with a specialty pharmacy out of New York. Yeah. Um, they're called 503B Pharmacy. So you're able to – I mean, you got to go through a, a good vetting process – you know, it took me building the team with a, a medical director, you know, as my consulting physician. Yeah, wait, wait, I'm sorry for interrupt you. Let me put a pin in that real quick because we're getting too far into this. I want to know what it was like from the beginning. First of all, mm -hmm. I kind of want to know, because I feel like with the medical end of it all, like you got to probably go through a bunch of different hoops that like, just like a restaurant industry, talking mm -hmm. to Matt about like the shit that you have to do to open a restaurant is just like mind blowing how much, how much you have to be conscious of for you. Like, 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 did you have an idea? of this before you like 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 where did this idea of you doing this mobile hydration therapy come from man this ticked off in my head about a year and a half ago i would say I whenever took, you were in new york whenever i was in new york but before that you had no ideas about this i had really. no i had no interest in it didn't really even know about it i yeah. was like everybody else yeah I yeah was yeah just like but for me i got a curious mind i've always wanted to be entrepreneur and kai like said i want to try Anything I can get my hands on, touch, try, yeah. learn about, okay. whatever my endeavors are, I got to dig deep into more. Yeah, I just didn't know if like before you tried that, you had like a like an idea of it beforehand. Like, what were you doing before this? Before this, I was work. I was doing acquisitions. Yeah. for an oil and gas firm. Yeah, you know, and that's just like you know nine to five grind. Like you're just grinding on some stuff. You had the grind on it. Yeah, Who knows you know I'm traveling you know, occasionally. You know, backwoods, <laughs> West yeah. Virginia, and whatnot. Um, still, you know, it's a great thing to do. Was it something that you like went to school to do? I went to school for political science, man. Really? And uh, got my head flipped on that. <laughs> uh, wow, I didn't. Yeah. yeah, like that's crazy. Yeah, that was the goal at first. What did you want to be? I want to be a lobbyist. Yeah, was one of my goals. Because like, oh, like, you go to you go to school for that. You become a lawyer. You get into this firm. So I was like, ah. Being a lawyer may not be for me, but I mean, I'll go that route. Yeah, become a lobbyist. You know, had some like my sister was always involved with government, so I kind of could fall in her footsteps a little bit. Oh, that's cool. You know, um, I'm a first generation American. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So a lot of that also, you know, I back with my parents. You know, they're just always are in that head grind. You know, and kind of was getting a lead towards that. Yeah, worked on a campaign in college, and uh, starting to do and it was. Terrible. Just flipped everything for me. <laughs> I was like, Are "You kidding me? Like, nah, fam, this ain't for me." Yeah. So, but you know, I just kind of powered through it. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, got to go to school. You got to go, go to school. school. You know, I'm here. Yeah, I'm this, I'm this deep, so we, I wasn't coming home without it. Yeah. So that makes sense. Got into that. You know, stayed in. Uh, this was out in Kent State, so then I stayed in Ohio for a while, um, working, and then as soon as I got an opportunity to come back to Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, because yeah, you I said you grew up at Blackhawk. 
Yep, I went to Blackhawk, um, Beer Falls, lived in a small town at Chippewa. Yeah, that's what Matt, was, Matt was like. I went to school with this dude, and I was like, like, like high school, high school, yeah. and he was like, yeah, dude, and I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, it was, it was kind of fun in him coming back here, like you know, just seeing the different people you touch off and seeing where they are. It's wild. From could, I just, I saw some pictures of what he looked like in high school. I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> no, I you, couldn't even imagine the stories. Dude, oh, mom, yeah, he was a dude. He, yeah. uh, um, but uh, he, he definitely uh, is someone that I. I've gravitated towards through you know my experience with this podcast to an extent like d- to the effect of like where you know I trust everything like 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 whenever he vouches for someone tells me about someone you know gives me an opinion about someone it's like I could I know that that dude is real like he's a straight shooter yeah, he's a good dude he's been all over the place absolutely you know? but you but but you I mean I didn't expect you to say you went to school for political science of that hour long conversation we had whenever uh, whenever we were <laughs> yeah. sitting down there that yeah, didn't come up yeah don't go really that route I, I mean, understand I, mean, I, stay, I stick my head to the grindstone with I it I get it and I'm opinionated on it I mean I could rap all day about it oh, but no, it was no, no, just no. like you know the whole working on the campaign seeing the ins and outs of it you're seeing how the sausage is made and yeah, like it's, it's probably not as appetizing as you think it is it was like yeah like damn I gotta go through <laughs> this to be here and you know so how'd you get into the oil and gas stuff man I came back here I was working and a friend of mine they reached out to me on LinkedIn oh yeah yeah LinkedIn. Didn't I don't even really have know one. That much about it. Hey, surprisingly, yeah, I had it there. Yeah. Didn't know what it was really even used for that. I was yeah. just like, oh, that's invited dope, me though. to set it up. Yeah, that's how it was. I don't man. know if I ever met anyone that had a uh, success with LinkedIn. <laughs> then, yeah, that's so straight up. Got that's the- cool, though. How long did you do that? Five years. Five years. So you were in it. About six years. Five to six years. You were in it. So like that was like a that was a career for a minute. Yeah, you know, I was in it, enjoyed it, worked with a great team. You but know, you wanted to be an entrepreneur. Always had that spirit, man. Yeah. Anytime I could, you know, from a kid, like it's fine. I was talking to my mom today. She's like, you know, you doing this is funny. Since nine years old, like I was always doing yeah, something. Trying to, trying to make a move. Trying to do yeah, trying yeah, to make a move. For and, sure. You know, where where are your parents from? <laughs> oh, sorry. My mother's from South Africa. Yeah. Um, my dad's from Mozambique. Okay. To some, yeah. Do they live here? Yeah. Okay. The only ones from the family here, you know, that, that history back there, they're fortunate you know to make some moves yeah um you know for us here actually started in houston texas oh yeah yeah so born there i mean i don't really i can't really claim it i mean you, you no, 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 i feel I like when it. you leave when you're five yeah like, yeah yeah it's, it's like it, if you it, ain't had no meals there and you don't it, have a place to go like you can't, <laughs> why don't call yourself yeah so you know they were there my, my my dad like a big pittsburgh guy oh that's cool yeah like he that's the first place he came to was he went to pit wow pittsburgh. yeah so that's pretty cool he always circled back to here and that kind of instilled like that love so what's you know, that what's the their air. idea of you running like a like a hydration therapy like i feel like if i would like i was explaining to my mom i was like i'm going to get like an iv and she was like what and i was like i'm going to this place and they're giving you like an iv and kind of like you know it's kind of like giving you hydration therapy it's like is it like can they grasp what's going on with it i think they thought it was a joke yeah i mean i I'm, I, I always play tricks on my mom yeah so she, you know while i'm doing this uh you know and it's kind of like i'm doing this slowly i wasn't like jumping all into it you no know? no, it's no yeah like, yeah all right, little little because at the beginning i was like oh this is gonna be a side hustle yeah at the end of the day and then you know it kind of grew and it was growing and growing a little bit more and i told her and she's like sure yeah okay like how can you do you're not a doctor yeah and, and my mom was in the medical field oh she, yeah. yeah she's a med she was a medical technologist oh, that's retired cool. now so she's just like okay and then finally i was like you're doing it it's probably just it. like crazy i'm like i was like me i said i'll bring you to the shop when it's done you yeah see how real this is that's so awesome brought him down and she was just like wow this is great why don't you tell me i would i would invest it that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, like, that's cool to be able to say that, like you know, you got it, and like you got to bring him down whenever it was all like built up. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so she. I mean, she's now. It's it's funny. She she'll always even try to like pop through. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, well, I was just down here. Yeah. yeah. Down there, you know, <laughs> bringing me lunch or something. So that's cool. It's, though. it's kind of, it's kind of cool work. I think she really. I think it's cool that you were in a career for you know half of a decade plus, and then you kind of still had that, you know idea and that like kind of you know thought process to want to be out of it yeah man it's like i, re- I like i love uh 
biographies. Yeah. And especially like business ones is what I always like kind of sunk my teeth into. I'm always like listening to different, you know, yeah. speakers and whatnot. They always say, you know, if you got a passion, it's not too late. And if, I mean, I, I just got a spirit of money too. So it's like, you know, you're not going to get it all you want by just doing this one thing. If Yeah, you know, absolutely. Just, do someone's going to make you most importantly happy and people that you love. And I mean, the team I'm around right mm-hmm. now, um, I can't even say, you know, it's my idea, but everybody's kind of gravitated Makes it towards it and really made it like brought me to the next level. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? That's the that's the best part about like you always see a meme where it's like, uh, you know, someone I don't know how they phrase it, but it's like there's people that are like, you know, bosses and like, you know, have like their way and they don't want anyone else's creativity. But like it's the people that could like, you know, use that around you everything that's around you all the people that surround you and like and and kind of join as one and like elevate all together rather than just like you know yelling at like 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 just being a dictator it doesn't it doesn't work that way yeah yeah real. yeah i mean every no one's you can read anybody's story no one's ever done it by themselves yeah i mean you can call yourself self-made but nah man it really that's i mean you can heard all the old adages it takes a village yeah yeah my yeah. favorite one is you know um Every champion needs help along the way. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, you, you, you got to learn from somewhere. It's yeah. crazy. It's cool, though, the, to like hear someone like, you know, a lot of companies, you know, my past companies, my the place I work now is cool, but like the, pl- the past few companies, it was just like that mentality. Like people didn't want to like, you know, kind of, you know, take people's, you know, into consideration it was just like the bosses were the bosses you know the grunts were the grunts like now like i'm at a place where it feels like you know i'm part of people you know what i mean like and that just makes things so much better for the person that that is doing your work you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like no no one that's working for you that's being like treated like just a grunt is doing them they're not happy yeah that's the culture you know you need to put out there like not everybody's just a number i mean it's i like that uh, everybody that i work with now I mean, that's got good. A great communication. It's like, yeah, I really, at the end of the day, I kind of work for them. Yeah. I mean, that's how I, I, I view it. Yeah. You know, that's why I try to be there every day and whatever the staff needs. It's that's like, cool for sure. You sit back here, I got you. Yeah. You know, that's definitely cool. So, so for you to be uh, like working in there for six years, you know, like I feel like the main thing that I keep thinking about is like, you know, if you're working somewhere for six years, like you're building a, a sense of security. And like you have that security, like you're you're comfortable, you know, you know, if you're doing it for that long, you're obviously comfortable, you're used to it. You know, it, it feels it feels like a lot of people might have a problem or, or have difficulty trying to break out of that to something that could be, you know, that could fail ultimately. A hundred percent, man. And that's, you know, but I feel in this day and age, the dude that is aggressive you know, is scared going, money don't make money. Exactly, man. And that's I mean, my favorite. You know, you got to get comfortable. My favorite. Someone told me this: be comfortable with being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's something I. I that's kind of like I try to make that my superpower. Yeah, like, dude. I love right. that. I was never someone who was like really into like motivational type shit. Like, I was never someone that like gravitated towards like that. But you know, in my later years, if I find someone that I like, I like like. Uh, do you know David Goggins? David Goggins is this dude. He was this super fat dude who just like is a runner. He was on Joe Rogan. You know, that's how I know half of these people. But he just like will be running for 100 miles. And he just has like these very, very like hardcore, you know, not for everyone. He's basically like, you know, man the fuck up. Like, like no one's doing this. You know, no one's helping you. It's like, this is you. You have to like quit being a bitch about it and just do it and it's like it's very very like aggressive and it's like you know it's not for the faint of heart but like that shit gives me motivation because it's like you know absolutely man i mean at the time it's a lot of aggression just the right amount amount of smarts yeah that's exactly it really you look at everybody out right now nor what it takes like yeah for real so so how uh so like after you you know find this location things fall into place a little bit like what is what is like your next step like are you envisioning do you have to envision like you know, how do you know what to get how do you know what to do you know what are the hoops that you have to go through so at that point i'm like hustling to see who is going to work with me now yeah like so i'm making i took me about uh, I'll say it was six months to finally nail down yeah. 
suppliers and then they're like all right if you have this this and the third in place we'll work with you because at first that last year everyone's hanging up on me yeah not returning calls emails are going unanswered i'm just like Ugh. and then finally no i just had that one in new york he's like all right i mean i see you got set up here because i was working with you i got an attorney he's like okay got to work through this because nobody really knows about this field. That was Even they didn't. Yeah. And I had to pretty much lay everything down for them to be like, that's how I believe it works. I need you to vet it this way, this way in the third. Yeah. Get me in touch with the right state people. So, you know, we're having that conversation. Meanwhile, I'm kind of like playing, I'm trying to like fake it till I make it saying, oh yeah, I already got this like, you yeah, know, lined up sure. here. Just not to turn anyone off of, you know, off on me yet. No, nah, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to like, you have to, act you have to like come correct and like pretend like you know what the fuck you're talking yeah, about yeah, that was it and like that oh yeah i can get that no problem and meanwhile i'm like oh shit i got i know you're like oh, make this, this work. works yeah and then finally you no know, i hit the stage where they were like i had all these places nailed down your and suppliers you mean the suppliers yeah location and then they hit me they're like we think you should have a medical director because at first I was like, ah, I got a PA. I think we're going to be okay going in this route. Like, we should just get someone just to put their name on things or just say that you have them. Yeah. You know, we'll probably lower the insurance too. I was like, I didn't tell me that. So, so, at, so, so wait, 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 what is it like, like whenever they say a medical director, like what is, what are the, what are the responsibilities of a medical director? So he's someone that we can just consult with, uh, okay. you know, so with um, any of our exams, you know, yeah, 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 we got yeah. a question, want to shoot to him, Okay, working on the formulas, if that not, makes more sense. He's kind of like, I mean, he really puts a stamp on things, which yeah, is yeah, nice. Yeah. So if I, I put out an ad for that and thing went crazy i had about doctors all over the country contacting me for this that really were like oh we love this concept but we know about this and i want i would love to work with you and it's like okay that really at that point i got we got full confidence yo now let me ask you a question now we talked about this whenever i was getting my treatment like i was saying that like you know pittsburgh has always been you know almost a year behind with like all this shit you go to vegas they got this stuff there. They've yeah. been had this there. So whenever you reached out to all these people that are like medical directors, I'm curious. Like you said, you had a bunch of people all over the country that reach out to you. But what about people in Pittsburgh? Like doctors are definitely behind on the te- like the the updated technology. <laughs> Did anyone from Pittsburgh ever reach out? You know, it's crazy, man. I first found a doctor here that I wanted to work with. Yeah. I was like, I kind of knew him, yeah. you know? And I was like, this is an opportunity. It's quick for you. Like, really, we got a great system here. And he just was not excited about it, was skeptical about it. And I was like, yeah, this before I even put the ad up. Yeah, and it's like, wild. You know, go, shit. Like, okay, you're right here and you're questioning it. Then I was like, oh, you know what? Let me go out put this out. And then before that, it was people around the country were like, yes, yeah. yes, this is going to go, it's going to go. So it was the, the response here was very weak. So yeah. it's crazy you bring that up. Yeah, I mean, like, you that's know? what I think about. And they almost wanted me to sell it to them while these, you know, people in Colorado and New York are like... They already know. They because were like, like, oh, this is like, I can supply whatever you need. Absolutely. Like, I remember we were in Denver. Tanked. And, like, I remember looking, uh, whenever we were in Denver, we saw one. When we were in, uh, whenever I was in Portland, we saw one. Whenever I was in California, we saw them. You know, they're, they're literally any other, like, hop in place you could find this and it's such like a regular thing but here it's just not there yet it's it's weird at first i was like you know what maybe it's with coronavirus being out here they're just like tied up in their work but you know these other doctors were like you said they were pumped about it yeah you know said hey i mean you need to teach me more about this but i believe in it and you know how can i be a part of this that's super cool that was like yeah, that was what's up. So you find a medical director, and that that legitimizes things a little bit more. Like it, you got like a you got like a, a learn a learned person that's like more. It, it was someone who just was. Over are they top. doctors? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like you know I had to, you know I vetted them, you know, made sure like well we got work for you to get a PA license, make sure everything's you know in place there. Yeah. And it was nice with you know my PA you know. Cause she's really great on the day to day operations there. Yeah, and not and also it's cool. A lot of these are places they don't have that. They were like, "Whoa, you have this? She's there like all yeah, the time, absolutely, or whenever you need her." I'm like, "Yeah." So you know, even people, this it's nice to be able to have questions. Someone like on that level that's you know really out here. Yeah, 
doing that. So that really even elevated and made it give it a, a whole another level of being legitimate. Absolutely. That's uh that's super interesting to hear. So I mean, you get this medical director and like you get these suppliers and you have this location like w- like what is it from there? So from this on out, I'm like, okay. Now let me build solidify the staff. Yeah. And then I'm going to also I'm we're still like I'm going in between like I almost didn't trust my lawyers when it came to like the regulations and all that. I was like, I just need I need someone from Pittsburgh to come and tell me like I'm all in on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, I was called and they were like, Yeah, we already know who you are. Um, you're I sent in like, you know, my city registration forms or like, Hey, you're you're good to go. So it was then building a staff of nurses and that was, you know, great. Um knew some friends who were in it, yeah. you know, telling their friends, been still getting calls about wanting to work there. And then from there, it was about, so I had already gotten, I had this program built out about you know, earlier on in the year. So it was, all right, let's get the shipments in. Let's do like some dry runs. So I had a little friends and family place, like a couple of weeks before I wanted to open. I was like, okay, girls, you're going to get crushed today. Yeah. It was almost like a stress test. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That game, that's literally <laughs> what I did. Like you watch a bar rescue ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, Absolutely. Yeah. I put them through a stress test. That's cool though. You know, people just... I mean, like, it would never happen like that again. Yeah, but, but they, if they can make it through that, then they made, they're going to be fine. Exactly. They made it through that. They were fine. That's what they do in the fucking good. military. It's yeah. like they yeah. break you down, and then if you can make it, then you make, make it. it. Yeah, that's kind of what the mindset was with that. You know, I remember you know, they are pissed at me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it was I over. Bet. But, I mean, you know, that right there kind of solidified it. Then I was like, okay. You know, we could function. We can literally function. Yeah. And I'm still going to take it at a good pace for y'all because I think this is something I want to last. And most importantly, like when you come in here, let's just have fun with it. Like, yeah. You know, make people feel good. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. Have fun. And, and a lot of people like, you know, because especially being a nurse in this day and age, like they're going through some crazy stuff right now. Absolutely. And so when they come to their shop, they're like, I'm just so glad to be here. This is a much relaxing and, you know. Oh, gotta be like know, night and day. Exactly. Yeah, like for a lot night of people. And, and that was good. It was good to see that look on their faces and like the eagerness to like, you know, hey, you got an appointment today. Like, oh, can't wait to be there. See you soon. That's cool then. So, so when, like, when is this family, like this soft run that you did? So like, I did the soft run. It was July 25th. Okay. And when did you open, open? August 2nd. Okay. Yeah, so I kept it. Once, like that right there, after that day, I was like, all right, next we're week good. we're good. You guys are good. Now, how, now I know that this, is, this doesn't have a lot to do with it, but it does also. How did you uh, get the idea of like, you know, the layout and the design of the inside? Because it got a good vibe in there. I like the neon sign you got in there. That's dope. I like the brick. I like, I like how it feels in there. But you got dope chairs. I noticed this. All the chairs were clutch. My dude who's... Does like interior design and stuff. He's like he's he he draws me his whole rendering. Yeah, got my boy. He's like he does a lot of help with the shop. We call yeah. him Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. So I'm telling him this idea, and I find the place. I'm snapping pictures, and he like does this whole rendering for me. And he's like, I think you this kind of fits feels like you. Yeah, sent to me. I'm like, all right, let me find those chairs. And I got a story about them chairs first off too. Yeah, because they're nice. Yeah, but the sign you saw. Everyone was freaking me out about having a sign in the South Side. They yeah. Like, oh, you got to. You are. Oh, this is the thing. You got to have permits, and I, and you got to like you're in this historic South Side. So Matt had told me this too. He's like, bro, be careful about what you put outside. Yeah. If you try to, so I'm like, man, I love this logo. I really want something big to be out there, and I'm calling like other sign makers, and they're like, "Oh, you have a sign in Pittsburgh? We're not doing that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were giving me shit for weeks, and I'm panicking at this point. And I'm like, you know, we have these big ass windows, cleaned them all off. You see how you walked in there? Oh yeah, yeah. The sign is there for strategic reasons, so everybody from the street can see it, and no one. Because that's the busy side. That's like when you're walking down, you immediately see that neon sign. Yeah, Yeah, and so it's big. It's in the window, and the city couldn't say nothing to me. Oh, wow. So that had a big play on the left because he was like, yo, I know you want to sign, but because you look at everybody on down that side. Yeah, they got really, something small. Really small. Yeah, so small like, badge or something. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, man, I, this logo really is it. Like, I never really thought about that. That's a good, uh, that, that's a, that's interesting thought. Like, you know, not being able to put like a big sign out there. And I never really understood it because like, I mean, you see like, 
people like the Smiling Moose. They have like a neon, but it's, it's I guess um, it's, it's, it's on inside. inside. It's yeah. Inside. So like, and like anybody has something outside. It's just a little circle thing. And I was like, wow, you know, that's extra, crazy like, to think about. Extra electrical to probably get through something like that. So yeah. like, you know, let's kind of flip the script. Let's take advantage of these windows. Everybody's peeking in here already. Yeah. 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 Man, that's Here's interesting to look at. And like, you know, the vibe in the place when I first got it, it was a dungeon. Yeah. Like, it I was, remember going in there for the t-shirts that were in there before. Yeah. Dark as hell. You know, had it, I mean, that was their thing, which is yeah, cool, yeah. but I was like, if you're coming into space for what we want to do, it'll be bright. It's got to be bright, but I don't want it to be white and sterile. Yeah, also, yeah. They want it to look like a day spa or something like that. You didn't that. want to look like no sketchy hookah bar yeah, or something uh, like yeah, that. that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I was like, you know, we need to kind of get, give it a little warm vibe. Men and women are going to, you know, you're not going to be afraid to bring your mom in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, you're not going to be ashamed like, you know. I went to the day spot. Yeah, plus it still it still looks like a legitimate, you know, yeah. thing. It's not just like, you know, the the look of it doesn't devalue what it is at all. Uh, and I think that that's pretty cool. So another thing I was curious about is, now, these chairs, uh, I, I feel like that, you know, that's, that's such like a random thought, but like, you know, you're sitting, that's what you're doing. That's the vehicle that you're in the entire time you're getting this service. Exactly. So like how much thought went into your chairs? Huge. It had so to be, right? when I first got mine in New York, it was in a white room, and it had a like a like a single like couch. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm getting this. There's a TV on the wall, but I'm not like, oh, you. T- how long is it gonna be, Miss? Oh, about an hour or so. I'm like, dang, I can't move my arm or do anything. Like, yeah. You know, I was like, so how are we gonna do this to where you feel like you know this is about you? Yeah. Comfort. So, you know, comfort, versatile, like, because, you know, they got the moving ottomans, so you can be short, you can be tall, it didn't matter. Yeah. It can fit anybody. And so I find these chairs, you know, after the great search and, you know, talk to them, like, okay, I need a deal on, you know, on these chairs. Like, I want them that, that bad, like, yeah. work with me. So the yeah. dude does it, and he's like, all right, I'm sending you the chairs. And no, FedEx is crazy, <laughs> like, during this time. So they say they're sending a chair. I'm like, you know, can you let me know? Because it's South Side too. I yeah. live in North Side. Yeah, so they're I gotta wild. like run here back, and I'm you know still gotta work and do what not. Plus, so they can't leave nine can't huge leave boxes chairs. right outside there. So it's coming up towards this this uh, soft opening. Yeah, and I keep missing FedEx. Uh. They delivered one chair. They left. And then for, I don't know why it was just one chair one time. Yeah. And then they were like, "We're trying to send all these other ones to you." I got people calling me like, "Yo, I think FedEx is outside that place of yours." Like, <laughs> I'm like, "Stop them! Like, do something for me." So yeah. you know, we're fighting over these chairs, and man, it, it they got there. Like, I built the chairs the day of. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah, good. So it's meant it was, to be. So it worked out. Yeah. yeah, it's meant to be with that. So so you build these chairs. You have you have everything like you know ready to go in place and then you do this opening like what is what's your uh, approach to marketing this since it's such like a new you know niche type thing niche thing see exactly like I wanted it to be not too didn't want to spam people right away like you can look at it right now we're not doing that yeah because that I mean from you know I will not buy shit if people shove it down my throat like I will I will be like no I was like, this is a different type of experience for people. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm a social media guy. Yeah. I mean, big sleep. So I was like, you know what? Can we build something where we're focusing it there and lightly rolling in, doing the right, you know, let people react to our product. Yeah. And it's it's worked out good. Like people have been coming in. They're posting us. Yeah. I mean, I want to get aggressive, I think, somewhere down the road. Yeah. But like not to, you look at these other places and it's this. Oh, I'm talking about like I'm talking. I didn't. I didn't mean like you know. If you're marketing by like posting shit on Instagram, that's one thing. But if you're like, like I get spam emails yeah. every single day from some companies, and it's like, bro, you're making me not want to be involved with you at yeah, all. You know, it's, it's too much. It's too much. I'm getting like a ton of marketing calls. Like you know, I got a deal for you type of deals. I'm Dude, like, the main that's thing. Not, that's not us. That's, the that's main thing us. is just like seeing people 
be there on like Instagram and shit like that. It's like people like to see people that they know that aren't like, you know, you, you don't want to see a fabricated ad. You want to see people, whether it's, you know, you reposting it on a story or something like that. You want to see normal people using the product rather than, you know, the fucking commercials that are like not a paid actor, but it's you, clearly you a paid, paid actor. actor. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, bro, I don't want, I don't want this fake bullshit. I want to know what it's really like. And I love you brought that up because it kind of worked out that way. Yeah. That someone that was big came up and wanted to do it yeah like so my one boy's like i see all you're doing this stuff on like instagram i want friends home she's this model she wants to come and do this and i'm like she's like yeah she's like she won't post for you i'm like word yeah <laughs> like billy joe powers come on through who is that so she's a friend of mine like a boy's kind of met her through him yeah and but she's like this big like boxing promoting model out in really? la she's from she's from pittsburgh she won like a ton of like these modeling usa contests that's wild Bikini, like she's like been featured she's working with a vander holyfield right now Jeez. they're trying to make and she's just a cool um, yeah. chick you know just from outside Jeanette. and it's like that's wild yeah, it's like, just like that's sick that you know that's what i mean though a person you know just posting some shit it's just like seeing people yeah, and she was like yeah i'm happy it. to like yeah i want to come through she brought her mom with her and we yeah. just had a great time like that's she's dope. like hey, she wants to try it too and I looked down. She's oh, she's got half a million followers. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, that's wild. You know, so it just worked out cool. And she's now, dude. That's what that's it, what it is. I mean, it's it's gonna be organic like and it, that. And it felt good that it was Pittsburgh too. You yeah, know, that's like the coolest thing. Like, you know, absolutely, someone that's from here understands the people and like you know what we want, what we like to see, and not what and her being on the West Coast, like you know, she understood it, but she never even had one before either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, now now trying to communicate what the hydration therapy is to people that don't have any sort of idea what it is. How do you do that in a way that's kind of like, you know, a snackable amount, you know, like instead of just like giving someone a fucking paper and it's like, read all this, you know, how do you approach that marketing wise with, with like, you know, just enough to kind of like, you know, educate people enough to know what it is. How I've done it thus far is I talk about p- things you understand. Yeah. You know what vitamin C is. Yeah, 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 You know yeah. you need it. You know vitamin D, you need it. And my pitch is, you know, you take things, you know what an IV is. Yeah. It goes straight to your bloodstream. Yeah. Everybody knows that's a, the easiest way to get those things into you. Yeah. So you're taking this, I'm saying, throw away that vitamin and put it right in your blood and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like taking it that these are basic elements that you already understand that your body needs and i just kind of explained to them i can get it into you a more efficient way yeah that, that makes it's, sense yeah it's kind of been the conversation i have about every day yeah and like whenever you have people that are coming in and like asking you about this like do you do you have more people that are like completely like new to it or do you have more people that, do you have some people that like know about this already you have people that they know their health Regiment to a certain degree. Yeah. At least they think they know. Yeah. And then, so they want to have like a, a conversation of, okay, how are you going to improve on what I'm already doing? Uh, and then okay. you have, yeah, that's kind of like half the battle. Then you have people who are like, I have no idea what this is. Yeah. And I'm like, have hey, I had IV before? Like, yeah, I went to the hospital. I'm like, you know, re- <laughs> why do you think they gave that to you? Yeah. Because uh, it's good for me. Well, yeah. This is good for you too. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of like the easier conversation to have with them where they're like, you know, something that you'd have in that setting, you know, you can elect to have here. And so I'm not selling you something that's, it's not an unknown thing. I guess in this atmosphere, it's unknown. Yeah. But you know, it's good for you. And they're like, that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. I'm not out here yet. Like you said, shoving a paper down your face saying, oh, read all the benefits and this is that it's like you know, tell me what you understand and I'll, I'll help you understand what you need yeah that's good i mean that's that, that makes a good uh good uh businessman yeah it's just, you know it's kind of it's simplistic for people like i'm not putting any like crazy you know different treatments of like, people that know about it, it's it's fun talking with them yeah they're kind of like yeah but i also particularly being in the south side is breaking the stigma that oh well, I have to be drunk to do this. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Or I gotta be, you know, a college kid or just some sort of age. It's kind of it's been nice. Like some of my, you know, our 
or customers have been people like, hey, I want to do a health drip. Uh, you know, my doctor talked to me about like this and, you know, this looked like a way I could do it. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of, it's even more refreshing. It's you know, surely not going to hurt your body. It's not going to hurt your body. And, it's, it's, and I think people like, it, especially some of the older cats that come in, they're like, they can kind of tell their kids like, oh, you should see what I did. You yeah. know? They kind of like, they vibe too. We got like little music playing. They'll like joke around like, oh, I've heard this song before. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, go ahead. You know? That's funny. <laughs> yeah. You, like, you know, like, oh, you know, you do you pops. They get like a little bit, a bit of an escape, you know, like, uh, and that's dope. Like you, you definitely, you definitely do well with like what you have down there. So you've been open for almost a month now. Yeah. Almost a month now. Yeah. And, and is there any now, like I'm, I mean, it seems to be going great. I see you posting stuff all the time. It seems to be like you got a uh, a good amount of uh, foot traffic coming around down there. Now, is there anything that uh, that you were not anticipating being down south side? Like, what's like the biggest problem you've ran into? Randoms, man. Randoms. Like, I wasn't. I mean, hey, I love everyone, but no, no, like, no, I there's, get it. there's some different challenges. I like, worked down there for three years, yeah. and I, Del, I, I understand people just coming in, and you got the people that are just like, you know, that just come in just uh just because they're bored. Yeah, and like, you're just like, come on, bro, I got some shit to do. And I don't even know if they were bored or they know what they're getting into. Like one time, I was cleaning, and a dude tried to spray me with my goo gone because I was like, it's just true story. I, when I first getting in there, I'm like cleaning out the side. And I've been back by myself, and these two dudes rolled up, and I hear like spraying my goo gone over. I was like, "Can you please stop? Like, please, like <laughs> this is like That's crazy. not what you think it is, or something." Like, oh, and I'm trying to like, can you hand it back to his boys? Like, tell him to spray me with the goo gone. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so you know, yeah, I've had that, and it's crazy because you, you know, you seem like this kind of got that lounge vibe into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people do think it's like. A place to kick it for bottle service. Oh, like, I bet. It's, so I've had a, like I've had a couple of those. Like, do you have people that come in thinking it's something else, and like you know them being like, oh really, and yeah. like you know get a treatment and shit like that? I've yet to flip the script on someone. Yeah, I think because it, it, I got this tendency like we're, we're open like ten to eight. So yeah, kind of like on the weekends, you know, after later hours, when people just want to kind of relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through. I'm not necessarily locking the door yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a dude went in there. He came with a bottle of champagne. I was like, yeah, can you pop this for me? And he popped himself <laughs> on the couch. And I'm like, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can set that tone yet. Fam, That's but, funny. You know, check me in like an hour or something. That's funny. You know, and everybody, I got, you know, uh, well, uh, va- so vapes maybe. Oh, yeah. That's kind of been, because uh, it's got the drip. So yeah. that's kind of been the, the extra vibe like i'll get like people like wait is it you know a drip oh ah, i didn't even think about that yeah, the drip. I, I got hit yeah. with a couple of those <laughs> it's a vape shops it's like look at every other block down here there's about 75 of them yeah, exactly. it's crazy um now what like what is the goal of what you want to do with uh quick drip like i mean i know it's new i know it's brand new but it's like what like what are you what are you hoping like i'm hoping to put in like programs for the people of Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Like, this is something that I think can start here, be a regiment for individuals. Yeah. And then, why not expand? I think there's an opportunity in different areas of the country. I think these small, like you said, like Pittsburgh, kind of like Cleveland, you know. Yeah. And this medium-sized, like, cities, we don't ha- they don't have it. Yeah. And I feel like everybody needs it. And you know, that's kind of where... I'm I trying to establish it. Like, let's get a foothold here. Really put people in programs I feel they can really actually benefit from. Yeah. And work with different avenues, different companies. I mean, I think there's a lot of collaboration aspects with this as well that, you know, can fit into everyone's lifestyle, whether, you know, young, middle aged, old. It's something in it for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, it, uh, it definitely is. Uh, it's definitely an interesting thing, you know. Like it's. Uh, it got to be. It got to be an interesting thing because, like, all the advancements. Like every day, there's new shit coming out. You know, there's new things coming out, and it's. Uh, you know, it's interesting to be someone. I'm sure that's in like a medical. This is a medical field, yeah. It is, and it's weird, like being in that space. And not necessarily myself being a full medical professional, but taking in all that knowledge and talking with the different individuals out there in in the field. It's like, I feel this is almost, it's going to be, especially these pandemic times, a future for us. Yeah. 
I mean, it really is on the cusp of something that, you know, compromised immune systems and... Yeah, everyone's just in their house, not getting outside, not getting exposed to anything they need to be exposed to. Exactly. To keep their immune systems built up. Mm -hmm. And really, and sometimes that can be counterproductive. Yeah. You know, you need sun, you need vitamins, you need activity. Yeah. And these are some things that can kind of... You can get in your home and po- hopefully push you to that next level. Also, just people are lazy. Like, it takes work to, you know, do these multivitamin programs. Yeah. And here's some way I feel for, I know myself, like, it just breaks that down. Like, hey, I've had my drip week one, week two, and I'm good. Yeah. Like. Absolutely. Anything, like, your body really needs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, the education process with that has been, like, the biggest, I mean, it's. I won't even call it a challenge. It got to be a challenge, yeah. especially for someone who never, you know, you didn't go to school for any sort of like, you know, medical yeah. field. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a challenge, like in that engaging in that space. But it's also it's fun. Yeah, it got to be I fun. Mean, like you're in light, like you're enriching people. Like to see the look on their face when the light bulb goes off. Yeah, it's cool to think about like something that you start to be passionate about that you really don't that you really didn't know that you were going to be passionate about from like a young age. Like I never knew that I was going to be doing like, you know, audio type shit, you know what I mean? Or because if I did, you know, I would be, I would have done so many different things, but you know, nowadays I like learning about it because I don't know anything about it. And like, I'm passionate about it. So the more I learn about it, the more beneficial it is to me, which makes me want to learn more about it. And makes you this all the way, all around better. That's like, it. I mean, it's, that's it. It's an evolving process. And it also just keeps life interesting, man. Like, yeah. You know, I'm in, in a field where I'm learning something new almost every day, reading about it, getting, having these different conversations with people. And sometimes, you know, I get some, I'm get thrown for a loop. Yeah. I'm like, all right, you know, I appreciate that question, brother. Like, Hey team, research this and let's see if we can you know, make yeah. this happen. And you know, having the avenues and access to these different type of people, man, makes it really cool. And it's you know, you know, pushed out on everyone else too. Yeah, I like Something that. special, man. I like that. It, it, gotta be fun. It, it gotta be. A, it's an exciting time. I know it gotta be. I mean, it's a crazy exciting time. Everybody like, in, especially you know, we're in a pandemic. Yeah, you know, but that's been the biggest question. Like, how are you, you going to navigate around this? educate people well i feel like actions with it i feel like like you got the pros and cons with yours because like one you know you have to have like a cleanly space oh yeah you know you're obviously not gonna you're not you're not a club you're not gonna be like you know packed like 50 people in there (laughs) can't do it (laughs) it, it's a natural funnel Mm -hmm. and uh you know i feel like that you're you know you're set up for you know, success with this. Like, you know, it's not going to be a crazy influx of like, you know, 20 people coming at one time, like coming to get a coffee. Like you're going to, it's going to be something that's spaced out, something that's like, you know, more of like a, something that you prepare for rather than just like, yeah, you know, I mean, walk into. Absolutely. And the walk-ins are welcome. But yeah, like yeah. you said, in this space, like people don't, they're not sure. It's yeah. funny. Like we have a booking website and about everybody, I'd say 75% of the people, they call me first. Yeah. To say like, hey, is this real? Can I book it? And you know. I do that too, yeah. though. I'm guilty of that completely. Like, I just did acupuncture and like there's a booking website, but uh, I called, you know. like, That's I, Why is that? Uh, uh, because I just felt more, you know, I'm someone who I don't like to text my friends a lot of time. I'd rather just call someone. But we're in this world that uh, it's me being stubborn. That's what it boils down to. <laughs> okay. We're in this world where people are just like, you know, hang up the phone or like hit the ignore button and just text back like, what up? And it's like, I get that. And I'm kind of like that too. But like, I want to break that around my circle. Like I try to call people and I just like, you know, I call people. You can't, I can't tell your tone whenever I call That's you. Tr- oh yeah. My you know, thing like, is, I yeah. can't, I can't, I can't tell your tone whenever we're texting. Like, I don't know what you mean whenever we're, you know, DM and I'm not just necessarily talking about you, but like, no, I feel you. My thing is, that's why I like only like to text people. I know. Yeah. 
Because I, I can read you're right. It, exactly. Can read you. you know, I it used to, weird, it's yeah. funny, but like my mother and father, like whenever I'd be coming home from school and shit like that, I would always call both of them on the way home. I would get their mood. You know, I would read them <laughs> yeah. like if they're like okay. in a good mood or if they're like in a bad mood. Out here screening. In, yeah. If they're in a bad mood, like I'm going some, I'm, I'm going to my friend's house or something like oh, that. Okay. If they're in a good mood. I know how everything's going to be. And like, I just feel more connected with someone. If I could call, ask you a quick question, you know, if you're telling texting with someone if you're emailing with someone that's why i fucking hate emails it's like you're waiting two three days oh, for yeah. a reply mm-hmm. it's yeah like, when i that's my thing with texting like if i text you yeah it's for immediate response yeah yeah or yeah like some type of feedback but 100%. yeah like i said if i don't know you i don't like texting you because I, get that. I can't read your inflections and whatnot 100 so, percent. so yeah I'm that's just like, the way that i think about it yes yeah, so i, I like, kind of feel you midway on that midway but like you know for, i'm i'm also a terrible person because the reason that the the that the podcast is called i'll call you right back is that you know every single person that i talk to on here has a a crazy story a life they're doing something that they're focusing all their time and energy into whether it be you with quick drip whether it be matt with streets whether it be rick seaback with you know whatever he Man, does the legend <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it's like it, at one point in life all of these people were working their hardest to try to get where they are today and in that point in life you know you have people that call you and you're just like yo i gotta call you right back i'm working on something <laughs> Everyone shares yeah, that. Shit. I share that. And I don't mean to, to to not call people back, but like I'm grinding I mean, on something. And everyone else who I talk to is grinding on something. And I just felt the name fit I like that. I feel that, yeah. And the Zach Morris phone is just takes yeah, it over the top. It's dope. I can just have a regular phone. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it takes it over the top. I love man. 80s shit. You know, I love the old 80s movies and stuff like that. And I was like, you got to get a brick phone. That's a, that's a sick logo. Right. Like, Do you been watching well. that Cobra Kai? I haven't got to it yet, but I just seen it got put on Netflix. I'm excited to watch it. I was all about the Karate Kid whenever I was back in the day. That was uh, that was good stuff. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Now, uh, so I mean, like, I mean, I think that I pretty much grilled you about everything I wanted to grill you about as far as uh, the quick trip. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Like, it's I, I needed this. Are you nervous about being a new business owner in a place like the South Side? Like, are you nervous at all? Like, do you have any like hesitations? Oh, I did. I mean, like, I was a. If you would have talked to me a year ago, at this yeah. point, I was a hundred percent against getting a storefront location. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Particularly in the South Side, like, yeah, because it's a most- sketchy spot. So, the South Side is like, it could be hot and cold. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people get turned off by like the environment down there because of like you know bars and shit like that. You know, people don't equate bars and like you know restaurants yeah. down there with like a place like this but you know it's why it's interesting like that's why i asked you if you were like nervous about yeah, i shit. was nervous about it, and but matt like having streets over there yeah in that realm like gave me some confidence 100 percent, it had to be someone that you know someone that you know you're not just the the random outcast there that don't know anyone you know he got weight in south side yeah. you know that motherfucker is like you know he's been there he lives and breathes in the south side yeah so he, yeah he's king of the streets so yeah. that really him having him there like just gave me his whole level of confidence it's like okay dope. we're up top you know i'm feeding off his energy oh yeah and i was like you know we can really like make something you know that's exciting dude like out of this and just get it to the level i feel it can be and like yeah you're right it's south side no one's thinking about okay my health going necessarily towards the south side but hey pittsburgh we're yet. growing man yet, yet. no yet. one's thinking about it yet but, but man you know you're out there you know you're the forerunner in yeah, it Yeah, for real we're growing i mean we got you look at all this tech shit and research coming into this place like we are at a forefront of something special i think that and i travel a good bit yeah that we have a lot of stuff that other cities do not have and we yeah. get to, we it's cool we get to play that like fine line of being on all, you know on both sides of the field we're not just you know you think pittsburgh we're just you know football and steelers and penguins and whatnot but we got there's a lot more going, coming to this yeah i love the city you know and i think it's also the reason why my parents came back here yeah i mean even all the way back then they just saw something in it that made me want to, you know, be closer to it. Yeah, really absolutely. Become, become one with it. Like, I mean, this grand American experiment, you know, that they've been through. Absolutely. It got to be interesting, too. Um, now, what do you do? Like, what do you do for fun? You know, but whenever you're not grinding and whenever you're not, you know, completely focused on this, like, what kind of shit do you do for fun? Man, when we weren't in this mess. Uh, yeah, but yeah, normal times. <laughs> yeah, normal times. Uh, 
I was a travel. I'm yeah. a big traveler. Anybody that knows me, I'm, you know, I take at least two, three trips a year, at least one overseas. Like yeah. me and my boys got like a, always got this like random getaway. Yeah. It's got to be somewhere no one's been. Yeah. Different country. No questions asked. That's awesome. <laughs> and you know. I, like I'm, what places have you been? So last year we went to Columbia. Oh, wow. How was that? So, it was legit. That's cool. Legit. Uh, I went to Thailand. Oh, we went to Thailand for New Year's. Jeez. Place is a trip. I bet. Like, yeah, Bangkok is something else. That like, got to be crazy. No. Especially it, around New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't understand what they meant. Like, you know, the, the what's the hangover shit. It's yeah. like, you just see, yeah, it's like, I could see that going down over there. That's, yeah. uh, I've never been out of the country. I need God, to. Yeah. I know, I know. I and, and I was someone who, you know, growing up, like, you know, I grew up in a relatively small, you know, kind of farm kind of town but you know i never really like traveled too much i went to california once but like i met my wife and like you know i moved away from my hometown and mm-hmm. towards the city and kind of you know kind of got injected into a little bit of culture and diversity around like the city started working in south side started like you know seeing different people talking to different people you know uh learning about it and like we started traveling more and it's like now there's nothing i want more than to just travel and experience new things yeah, man, you realize how small you really are 100 percent, 100 percent. somewhere else and you take in these different stories man like like we're so comfortable in pittsburgh because we grew up here but you go somewhere else and it's like you're you're vulnerable yeah, you're yeah, out yeah, there yeah, you are out there you're on their terms yeah and you gotta just maneuver you know, i love that mistakes yeah it, it's an adventure man like yeah we went to Portugal a couple years back. That was a trip. I bet. Yeah. That's cool. What's your favorite place in the United States to travel to? And what's your favorite place out of the country to travel to? United States to travel to. I got to take New York. You I love mean, New there's York? Some, there's something about the buzz of that city. Yeah. That like is unlike anywhere else. Like, yeah. I just call it like a bug like an energy. Yeah, it does got an energy like, in it. It's just something different that you can get into some different type of shit that you can't get in anywhere else. Yeah, it's crazy in New York. Yeah. We we went to New York. Uh, I went to New York twice in my life. I went once with you know middle school whenever uh, the 9-11 uh, memorial, there was like a 9-11 memorial. We went there and like uh, after that, I'd never been in New York. And then a couple <laughs> years ago, we went to go see uh, Run the Jewels and Jack White and... Uh, Okay. Uh, we went there for like four or five days oh, and, shit. uh, it yeah. was, it was so wild. Like we were in, Jan- it was January. There was like three foot of snow. I forgot my fucking coat at home. <laughs> I was freezing to death, but like, like you said, there was an energy there. Dude, this It's a different. Never sleeps there. It's yeah, weird. It's weird. It is. It's like you get up. So, all right, we can be here at this time or we got this going on here. You yeah. Know, you know, it's just like Always something you could do there. Different vibe. New York, though. That's an that's interesting. It's understandable that people pick that. I mean, you have a little bit of everything there. That, uh, that makes like sense. Like I said, the visit. I don't know if I could set up no, camp there. No, But I mean, like if I'm going to be in some place for two days, yeah. two, three days. I'll... New York is cool. Yeah, you like, know, I hated, uh, I traveled to like, uh, I went to Vegas a couple of times uh vegas was cool i like that that has like an energy like that doesn't like sleep like you always got something to do but like you know one or two days there you're good that's all you need out i made the mistake going to vegas for a week once a week me and my boys were (laughs) dumb it was spring break you just had to be tired the whole time (laughs) we were tired and broke i know you had to be it was a dumb i don't know who thought for spring break yeah you know we're just you know, you're two days age. and out. Two days and out. Yeah, that's we all you go need. Go to casino, took all our money, and I'm like, yo, we have four other days here. Are you a gambler? I like some blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah. I, I never really dabble in blackjack. I like craps and like roulette. It's uh, do some. I can do some craps. I just I like to feel the cards in my. Hand. I, I like no. I like I, the dice. Yeah, I like just feel. I'm making the decision. Like, I, I know. Feel like I you know. can't you can't blame nobody but me. I miss the one. casino through this pandemic. I miss going to the casino yeah, for was, real. Yeah. It's terrible. I've been pissing away money on scratch offs. <laughs> um, but uh, okay, so the ending segment that I do with all the guests. I mean, I didn't even do the beginning segment, so we'll do that right now. Oh, Every okay. beginning of the podcast, I always ask everyone, "What's in the cup?" And uh, what's in your cup? We got some I'm coconut water. I'm drinking coconut water with mango. 
Is, is it all right? Yes, it's solid. Not bad. Seven Eleven brand. Seven Eleven like got a, some. They got some good gems up there. They got a lot of good stuff. Um, okay, but the ending segment that I do with everyone is an ending segment called Desert Island Questions. Everybody, gather up, please. I think this is a perfect opportunity for all of us to participate in some really intense, psychologically revealing conversations. So we're going to be playing Desert Island. Okay. Desert Island questions is where I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island to completely exhaust until expulsion. So the first category is three things to watch. So you get to pick three things to watch on a desert island. You know, and these are things that you're going to, these are the only things you'll ever be able to watch again. Ooh. <clears throat> Damn. Oh, I got you with a, there's, there's a few questions. So okay. You're I'm, getting thrown uh, into it. I'm taking, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Man, I just watched the Duster episode this morning in the in season three. I never watch any of these really, and I'm I'm ripping through them. But uh, yeah, the Duster episode was the last one that I was on. It was hilarious. <laughs> that thing's a classic. Ooh. So we got it's always sunny. I, can I take movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies, YouTube channels, whatever you want. I'm taking it's coming to America. Hilarious. <laughs> I yeah, love it. I can that can always break me up good. I think are they coming out with another one, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, I don't know I about don't it. Know. I don't it's know. Like, can you touch a classic? No, I don't know about and, it. And if you ever seen on YouTube, yeah, watch the Coming to America television series. They made one pilot. It's really awful, but it's, it's a <laughs> yeah. I, I'll watch I, that for I sure. I can see why they like. Eddie, I heard Eddie Murphy saw it was like never again. I uh, I'm a big Eddie Murphy fan, and I uh, I just started watching. You ever see Forty Eight Hours? Yeah. I never seen oh. that, and I watched that this weekend, and, and I was like, "That's crazy." You got to, dude. yeah, that was really good. Oh. Last one, man, it's gonna sound crazy. King of the Hill, King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's I, crazy. I can loop through those like it's. Yeah, that fame, they cracked me up. Man. Oh, my God. that I mean, I would have bet I could have, if I had every bit of money in the world, I, that would be the last thing that I, mean, I would ever me, I'm on this desert island. That's like 14 <coughs> seasons up there. Yeah, yeah. That, so I needed to. The, That's fair. I, to be fair, I never really gave it a shot. I've watched a couple whenever I was super young, and, you know, I get the propane and all that. Yeah. But it's like. No, I didn't I, like it when I was young either. I probably now, I probably would love it now. Yeah, you, I probably would. The shit grows on you. Um, do you read it all? <sighs> Not Okay. Not read, not nothing. Couple books. I mean, they gotta be put in my face. But That's all right. I'm, I'm a big like. If I'm reading anything, it's biographies. What about uh? Okay, so what about three biographies? If you had to, if you had to choose, I usually ask people three books that they would take on a desert island, but three biographies if you have them. I'm gonna take um. By any means necessary, Malcolm X. Okay. I'm taking. Sound weird. Made in America by I think yeah, it's Sam Walton's book. Sam Walton, maker of the founder of Walmart. Oh, really? That book actually shaped. My sister owned it, and that's where I first read it. Like, yeah, while she was in school, and it shaped like a lot of my entrepreneurial really insight. I never really was knew taken. About it. I mean, you know, in Walmart, I don't really. Not a, I'm not a Walmart guy yet, yeah. by any means, but his processes and a lot of that, like it really, it laid. You can't ignore what the dude did. Yeah, you can't ignore and like just some of this simple stuff, man. Like it just really, it it's part of the foundation of my like entrepreneurial like sense. That's interesting. All right, and I'm probably gonna go with Kite Runner. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was a huge book. Uh, about, I don't even remember what grade we were in, but I don't know. I don't think I've ever read it, but I remember yeah. everyone was all about that. Kyron, I saw the movie too. It's some powerful shit. Man. Yeah. What is it about? So it is about they're in Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, like Cold War times when like the Russians were kind of invading. Like this is kind of like as the Taliban and whatnot is kind of gaining their roots uh, during that time. Okay. And there's yeah, two yeah. families and one kid. He gets to escape. And his other friend doesn't, and he ends up like becoming like a big part of Jeez. Taliban. Like he's man, you know, I'm about to his, read that. And it's a lot. Of, it's in, it's some intense like. Yeah, that sounds yeah, wild. It's, it's, it's All right, um, the last category is three things to listen to. So you get to pick like three CDs. Oh, I got this. You got it. So I'm taking 
Tupac, All Eyes on Me. All right. Gotta have a double disc. Yeah, you gotta have a double disc. <laughs> For sure. Were you Tupac ever Biggie? <sighs> no, I feel like Iris, Biggie's better layer system, sorry. In my, in my book, I think Biggie is... Tupac said more powerful shit. Dish. I felt. Yeah, he did. He's but, a better. He's a better. I mean, his message is stronger, but yeah. just storyteller. Like, it's so weird to me because you know my brother is the same age as you. You said you're 37, mm-hmm. so my brother's 36. But his generation, they all like Tupac. They all favor Tupac over Biggie. You did at that time. What you favored Tupac over Biggie for sure. I didn't. I, I I love Biggie. Biggie is that's who I favor. But it's interesting that like you know thirty six, thirty seven year olds they favor Tupac over it. I feel like any of his friends that I ask, they always say Tupac. I mean, he was he just had that's the thing. He had more cuts. Yeah, that's on, true. Uh, like if you go that's through true. all he his definitely, cuts, yeah, you're right. Biggie had maybe two or three like commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that kind of caught on. Like, yeah, but yeah, if you actually yeah. listed the whole Ready to Die, yeah. It's much better album. Yeah, cr- crazy. Uh, uh, I'm taking um, Bob Marley Legend. Okay, yeah, I know that. Man. Guilty pleasure of mine. I, I'm a Michael Jackson guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Big I love Michael it. Jackson. So, man. I put everything about the person aside, yeah. but music, yeah, yeah, music play it all day. Like, yeah, like Thriller. I, I, all day. I, I think I would. All day. I'd probably stay in that. I'll, I'll bring Thriller. I watched. I, I saw something on Twitter today, actually, that said uh, no one will ever have as much power as Michael Jackson did, and it was literally a video of him standing on stage. He 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 came up on a platform on stage, mm-hmm. turned his head, and people passed out. <laughs> and 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 like it's just wild. Like that dude, he was yeah. bigger than anything that in the world. Energy was crazy, 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 crazy like, energy. But I mean, he had the just. Make Thriller, man. Them hey, cuts. Thriller, you got to... I mean, he made so many great songs, but those are good choices right there. You said Tupac, you said Bob Marley, and you said Michael Jackson. Those mm-hmm. are three... I mean, you're touching all the I just all had the, the, Yeah, something that... I'm not I'm not going to get mad. Like, them dudes can come on. Yeah. You, you never hit skip. You don't have to hit skip with I mean, that. it's tough. Well, see, I'm cheating with all eyes on me. I only do because I got to extend my playlist. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> but I mean... All right, that's good. that's all right. Okay, uh, so the the one of the last questions we ask is uh, a death row meal. So you, you know that you ever read them articles oh, of the people on death row and what they choose to eat? So what would you have to eat? You could pick whatever you want from as many places as you want. Ooh, I got to go with... I need lobster ravioli mm. from Roland's. Yeah. With streets Philly cheesesteak. Oh yeah. And I'm going to leave off with man. She has two sandwiches. I can't do That's that. That's all right. You do whatever you want. I love gaucho. I me and my me and my wife just went to try to eat there the other day, but they were closed. <sighs> we went on like a we, we were trying to get it on like a Sunday or something. After we were about to go right after I got uh, right after I left your spot, but they were closed. <sighs> Everyone's been telling yeah, me about oh, it. I need to get there. You have to do it. Their steak sandwiches are on a whole nother level. Now I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna vary it up. I'll take Dianoya's yeah. Naki. Oh, Dianoya's is fire. They got some good ass shit. I just feel, yeah, I, think, I can't be. Yeah, the have you tried the? Uh, have you tried cilantro at Yahoo uh, down by Salvation Army on Southside in Southside? Mm-hmm. I dude, think I know the place you're talking about. Though. Right it's on like the corner. Run. Okay, it's a uh, Argentinian dude. It is so. It's it's banging. It is so good. Uh, it's absolutely worth trying. And they uh, like. <laughs> They have. They're making arepas in there. They're making mm-hmm. street corn in there. Like they got all kinds of shit in there. And the sauces that they got, it's it's fire. So yeah, I'm a. I'll go for that. I'm big Mexican. I'm I'm biggest. My favorite food is seafood. Seafood. Yeah. Um, That's understandable. I it, love it. It's tough though. You, like it's hit and miss some places. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I did the other day was uh, we bought like 15 pounds of crab legs from oh. uh, from Woolies, and we went to my mom's, and I just like steamed these crab legs and like i was like i'll never go to like anywhere again i will just do this 
it's so much cheaper. How's your cracking game? Isn't it? Uh, they, these were perfect. Everything was perfect. Like that's why I was like, why have you know? I went to Red Lobster like last year, and I was like almost offended. You know, I was like, I will never go cheated. here again yeah. ever. It was like ninety five before the tip, and the meal was not <laughs> like it wasn't like like bad. It, like it, the people didn't like. You, you know. just know, like you, you just can, know, you can just tell. Like I, you got I, this. My like, palate's changed so much. Like yeah, yeah I got to stay supporting. Like these crab claws that you get from Woolies are like an Andre the Giant hand, <laughs> and like you know these crab claws that you're getting from Red Lobster, it, it's like a skeleton's hand. You know it, it's just not there. It's all about you've got the good cracking game. That's what I love crab legs, but I tr- I'm trash when it comes to like I I I, I, get, I get, nothing makes me more frustrated when that piece is broken off. I gotta yeah. hand it to my girl to do it. <laughs> For real, it's, that's all right though. I do. I like seafood though. That's a uh, it's a good thing with me. Um, all right, so uh, you picked the death row meal. Now uh, the second to last segment that I do with everyone is uh, now I, I'm sponsored by Turner's Tea. Let's go. Right? Cool. We're, we're we here with Turner's Tea. Okay. So uh, I do a thing called the Turner's Take Crate. Take the cafeteria, baby. Where I I know right. <laughs> So I have a crate that's filled with uh, questions submitted by other previous guests. Mm -hmm. And every time someone picks out of here, they pick the same shit. So I'm going to try to give this a nice shuffle. I swear, there's like probably 85 pieces of paper in here and people pick the same (laughs) shit. So pick one of those and uh, answer it to the best of your ability. You already know. Shout out to Turner's Tea. (laughs) Yes, sir. All right. If you could choose a hundred thousand of free cash with no equity strings attached to grow your business or have a leader in your industry as a personal advisor, which would you pick? That's a good qu- who asked that? Chad from Millie's. Damn, that was a good question. That's that's never been chosen before. That's really damn good. Wow. I feel like I would pick the hundred racks. Hundred equity with yeah, with no with no strings. I mean, I'm gonna have to go with that because I'll funny make it story. Work. Yeah, I, I can make it work. But I sort of following a guy who partly inspired me. He was like supposed to be like an industry leader, and he kind of let me down. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like I tried reaching out to him like a couple times, and it just went not. The conversation did not go the way I planned. Yeah. So turn you off to it. He, this is style. I was like, oh, you kind of like, or maybe a phony? Like, yeah. At this, at this segment, like, I thought, you know, you're more of like a, what's a dude? Like a, like a Gary V? I knew, yeah. Like, I thought he was like the black Gary V in yeah. my industry, but yeah. he was not. No. Like, he he might have been, but this maybe his methods were just. Not what you wanted. Not our converse, like, our interaction didn't go the way I thought. It That's understandable. Like a, yeah. That's understandable. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like that, you know, someone. Amateur move. Amateur move. And you already know it's about to be a fake number. It's like, <laughs> yeah. hey, here's your car warranty. Never had a car warranty in my life. But, uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, toss that, good. toss that right back in there. But, uh, you know, that just, that just fucking, um, that, that cut off my yeah. thought process. What were you just talking about? So I was talking about the dude who threw me off. Who I thought was like, oh, yeah. be my Gary Vee. Yeah, so like you were talking about that. <laughs> and you, uh, now I'm curious, uh, now, I feel like that someone who starts a business, you know, I would take the money all day because I have more faith in myself. You know, like I was telling you the other day while I was getting the treatment, like, who's going to work harder than you? You yeah. know, who's going to work harder than the person who wants this to succeed? And if someone was like, here's a hundred grand to grow your business, phew, I would be growing that thing like a weed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you get, like I said, I'm confident in myself. Yeah, a little bit of a control freak in that aspect. So, yeah, I feel you. That's part of it why, like, uh, Absolutely. I really got to have some serious faith in you to, like, bring you in as a vibe, which I almost felt this dude was going to be for me. Yeah. But, like, didn't work out like it that. It took this, like, a weird turn. So I'm like, yeah, I'm taking 100 sex. All right. That's good. Yeah, that's a good sure. question, though, for sure, yeah, from Chad. Is, um, okay. So the last question that I ask everyone is if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Anyone alive or dead? Yep. Honestly, it would be my grandfather my on my mother's side. Okay. Weird, we had so he died when I was pretty young. Yeah, how old? Uh, I think I was maybe 10. Yeah, 
at yeah, about 10. Yeah. And the stories, it's hard to remember back to then, but... It's a shame. Yeah, my mom would say, all, you, all we would do is fight. Yeah. Like, I would fight him on everything. And you know, as you get older and you hear about him and like oh, yeah. what like he went through like in apartheid South Africa and you're learning things now, you're like, what would our conversation would have been like 100%. If, if I wasn't a brat? Like here I am, this American kid going over there, giving this dude a hard time. Yeah. And like I heard like she was talking about, hey, you and him would just That's understandable. Fight, he would say like he's gonna do this thing to you and like you would just battle him. probably because we're probably just the same. We're both probably just stubborn and just Absolutely. Honestly, if I could I probably I would talk to him. Just, now now I it, now I usually someone will say a loved one and and I agree because like my grandfather passed away whenever I was in like 10th grade I think and uh you know I just didn't take enough maybe I wasn't in 10th grade maybe it was before that but I just didn't take enough advantage of like yeah. you know the time I had and uh I, I I talk about it here on here all the time it's like the biggest regret of my life is like you know, not utilizing that time. Like I remember there would be times where like my mom would be like, Hey, let's go see your pap. And I'd be like, no, I want to go skateboarding. And it's like, you know, I don't hold too much against me because like you're young, you know, you have a different mindset, Exactly. but it's like, I would give anything in the world to be able to just have a conversation with him. But on that note, if you had to pick someone that is not a loved one, who would it be? <clears throat> Like a no holds bar conversation. Any uh, the way I, the way people ask me, if someone asked me like, how would this conversation be? I envision it as something just like this: no recording, no nothing, just like this. Sitting down, you know, you're just having a conversation. Donald Trump. Oh yeah. I just want to see how, are you for real or not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need to know if everything you're spitting at me like is real or not. Like, cause sometimes. I'm, He's one of the dudes that, you know, he's just an aggressive dude with a, a right around smart. So I just don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. So I would just love. It's like, is he super insane or is that like, is there any validity to what he's saying at all? Or just like, are you real? Like, I just yeah. explain this. Like, so I just want to be like, yo, explain this to me, dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Weird. That's a good answer, though. Yeah, Especially do. you're the right person. If you went to school for, uh, you know, politics, like. You know, you would be able to have a conversation. Like, yeah, are you. Because, I mean, everybody probably would say, you know inspirational figures yeah, like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you get I feel like you get a lot from that that's why I, like, I don't I'm not mad with adversaries like yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you can learn the most from going with someone like uh, who you're gonna against the grain with you know absolutely what I mean? so I just feel yeah talking to him if it was a no holds bar like you know I want yeah that conversation that's a good answer I'm just curious man that's, that's a good answer <laughs> man I, I i really appreciated our conversation i think we had a great conversation yeah, this was awesome man i appreciate it for sure take a second you know plug everything plug quick drip tell me where people could book you where they could find you on instagram guys go ahead book us quickdripiv.com Lounge location, 1205 East Carson Street, Thursday to Monday, 10 to 8, Tuesday and Wednesday by appointment. So technically, we're available seven days a week. Follow us on Quick Drip IV, Quick Drip IV PGH on Instagram and Quick Drip IV on Twitter if that's your thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, we're doing great specials all the time. First infusion treatment, 20% off. Come see me, Bell. I'll be the front desk for you. We'll get you set up. Yeah, you can't beat it. You, can't, you really can't beat it down there. And like I said, I have no, uh, I got no reason to be lying about shit. And like, uh, I felt it was beneficial for me to go down there and get a treatment. Awesome, man. I awesome. really did. Oh, wait, don't forget, we not only do in service or walk ins, appointments, but we also come to you. There you go. You got everything you need. Like, th th what are you waiting for? Yeah. Give them a call. Try it out. Ain't nothing. You you know, that's like a bar tab for most people. You know, get on there and take care of your health. Yeah, yeah. Put yourself first. Invest in yourself is what yeah. I say. Put yourself first. Invest in yourself. Uh, everyone that's listening, I appreciate it as usual. Uh, the numbers just keep growing. And I, I could not be more thankful for the podcast and uh, everyone that listens to it, all the reviews that I'm getting. Uh, if you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. That's the biggest thing you could do for me. I'm trying to grow this shit up. I'm at 160 reviews. You know, I just want to break 200. You know, it's you know, that, that makes it easier for people to find me. Uh, but... Uh, 
yeah, rate, review, subscribe. That's all I'm asking for you. Check out the website. I'll call you right back.com. And uh, you already know, shout out to Turner's Premium Tea. They're out here keeping the lights on. But uh, thanks for listening, and I'll call you right back.